forget New Year's Eve, December 31st, we are going to have a night of praise and worship. We're going to start at 6 p.m. We'll have food, and then at 7 o'clock, we'll start our praise and worship, and we'll be done before midnight. I'm planning on being done around 11 o'clock. So if you're planning on coming to that, I need to know today just for the amount of food that we're going to need. Um, if you're interested in church membership, talk to Justin or April about that, and please, we would love to have you as a member of our church and joining in the fellowship and being a part of what we're doing here. So if you guys are interested in that, talk to Justin April. Um, new calendars for January are done. Please be sure and pick one up so you won't miss out on all the activities we have scheduled. Um, and we're going to start kids programs on January 6th. Not this Wednesday, but January 6th. What's that? Oh, I think that I, I, I've talked to April. I'm pretty sure that's right. So uh, though, that's all the announcements I have for you guys. Um, I want you guys to know we're going to do things a little bit differently this morning. They're going to do a full worship set, and I'm going to uh, close the worship set out with prayer. I'll give my message, and at the end of the message, um, we'll have a time of prayer at the end of the message, and then we'll close with one worship song. So just so you guys know how the flow is going to go. All right. <laughs>
Jesus' mighty name that you would empower all of us by the Holy Spirit to walk in newness of life, to walk in your presence. And Lord, as, as we walk with you every single day, I pray that we would just be faithful, faithful in all the things that you've given us, faithful with the talents that you've given us, Lord, and that we would every single day come to your altar, Lord, and allow you to just renew us and make us new every single day in Jesus' name. Well, I trust you guys had a wonderful Christmas uh, Eve, well, Christmas and Christmas Eve, and time with you guys as family. Um, I love the holiday season. Um, it's just, it's, it's so much fun to be around family and to um, just to be with one another. And um, anyway, I, I really hope you guys enjoyed the, the holiday season. Um, this morning, I want to read to you guys... Um, Two different parables um, that are, I believe it's the same parable. Um, it's the parable of the talents, but it's told in Matthew and, and Luke have two completely different um, takes on the on the, the talents um, and how they're how they're given out. And so I'll go ahead and uh, read them, and we'll kind of discuss the differences. And I I want you guys to know that. These aren't the only differences that we see in, in the, the Gospels. When you think about their culture, the, the, the Gospels were compiled 30 years after Jesus had, had died. And so if you, their, their culture was an or, oral culture, and so they would tell stories, and they would share stories. And so having the stories exactly the same were not important in their, in their culture. And in fact, it wouldn't sound uh, legitimate if um if the story is lined up completely and so in fact whenever the police make an arrest and they interrogate their witnesses um or interrogate people um they understand that someone is lying and it's been made up when their stories line up completely because they know okay this is a story that's been rehearsed and they've made they've made it up so if andrew and i go and and hang out let's say andrew and i are jesus's disciples and we interact with jesus well, 30 years after it, after I've told the story multiple times and Andrew's told the story multiple times, the story is going to be slightly different. But as long as the, the main heart of what the story is conveying is together, that's what's important. And that's how they can tell that the gospel is authentic is because if Matthew's gospel and Luke's gospel is, was one on one exactly the same, they would know that there, it wasn't a true gospel because they would have collaborated and had a completely, I mean, had the story be exactly the same. So the very fact that there's variances proves the, the authenticity of the gospel, uh, not the opposite, which is what people that are atheists try to claim. But anyway, let's get into the story. So um, if we look at the parable of the talent, starting in Matthew chapter 25, uh, verse 14, for, for it is just like a man about to go out on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted them with possessions. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and each according to his own ability, he went on his journey. And immediately the one who had received five talents went on to trade with them, and he gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had two, received two talents gained two more. But the one who had received one talent went away, dug a hole in the ground, and hid, it, hid, uh, hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of the servants came and settled accounts with them. The one who had received... Five talents came and brought them. Um, came and brought five more talents, saying, "Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I have gained five more talents." His master said to him, "Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of my father, or into the joy of your master." Also, the one who had received the two talents came to him and said, "Master, you entrusted me with two or two talents to me. See, I have gained two more talents." His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You were, you were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter in the joy of your master. The one who had received one, t one talent came and said to his master, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you did not scatter seed. I was afraid and I went away and I hid your talent in the ground. See uh, what, is, wh or what is yours you have. 
But his master answered and said to him, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on my arrival you would receive money back with interest. <clears throat> Therefore, take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more shall be given to him, and he who has an abundance, and he will have an abundance. But the one who has the one who does not have, even what he does have, shall be taken away. Throw out this worthless slave into the darkness, and in that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Okay, and this other the, the same parable is also found in Luke chapter eleven with several variances. Or I'm sorry, Luke nineteen eleven. While they were listening to these things, Jesus went on to tell them a parable uh, because he was near Jerusalem, and they su supposed the kingdom of God was going to appear immediately. He said to him, A noble man went to a distant country to receive his kingdom for himself and then returned. And he called his ten slaves and gave them ten minas and said to them, Go do business with this until I come back. So this is part of it where it's different. He gives each one of them ten instead of five, two, and one. But the citizens hated him and sent a delegation after him, saying, We do not want this man to reign over him. And when he returned after receiving his kingdom, he ordered these slaves to whom he had been given money, and he called them that they might know what business they had done. And the first one appeared, saying to him, Master, your minus has made ten minus more. And he said to him, Well done, good slave, because you have been faithful in very little things. You are an authority over ten cities. And the second one he came, saying, but master, your mina uh, has made five Midas. And he said to him, you are to be over five cities. The other one came to him and said, Master, your mina, which I kept put away in a handkerchief, for I was afraid because you are an exacting man. You take what you did not lay down and reap what you did not sow. And he said to him, by your own words, I will judge you, you worthless slave. Did you know that I am an exacting man taking up what I did not lay or lay down and reaping what I did not sow? Then why did not you put my money in the bank and having come, I would have uh, collected interest. Then he said to the bystanders, Take this man away from him and give it to the one who has ten mitas. And they said to him, Master, he has ten mitas already. I tell you that everyone who has, more shall be given to him, and the one who has, does not have, even what he has, shall be taken away. Um, I want to pray one more time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this wonderful, wonderful parable that we've been given on, on having talents. And that have been given to each one of us. Lord, I pray that we would be faithful with the talents that you've given each one of us. And that this morning as we talk about it, Lord, as, as anyone is convicted, um, God, I pray that that conviction would lead to, uh, to a determination and a joy in knowing that you're not done with any one of us. And it doesn't matter how many times we fail or how many times we screw up, that no matter what, you're, you're, you're giving and you're graceful and you give us more grace to be able to take with the talents that you've given us, even the ones that we have squandered, and that you're able to, to take beauty for ashes, and you're able to, to take the things that we have squandered and make them new. So I pray that you'd bless this message, that everybody would come away with hope and joy, knowing that you're not through with us yet, and that even if we have squandered our, our, our talents previously, that you can make all things new, and that when we are faithless, you are faithful and uh, you give us direction, and you will be victorious in our lives. In Jesus' wonderful name, amen. Um, so anyway, like I said, I, I really love these parables, and we'll kind of get into the differences a little bit more later. Um, but the question that I have for you guys in my message is, is, are you faithful? The first two in each one of these par parables were faithful to take what they had been given and to, to, to um, use them for their master's kingdom and to advance what their master had given them because they knew what they had been given them didn't belong to them, that they belonged to their master. And so the one area where this parable isn't perfect is that the master leaves them and gives them the talents, and it's up to them to take what, what, what the master has given them and them to make something of it. The good news for us is, is that our master is always with us, our master is always speaking truth to us, always encouraging us, always directing us. It's just uh, us up to us to have a life that is faithful to come before him and to ask him how he wants us to use the talents and the gifts that he has given us to minister to him. So that's the only the one area that, that we kind of don't have in this parable that, that is true. Because 
sometimes Christians read this and they think, well, whatever I, God's given me, I'm going to use for his kingdom. But then they never take time and ask God what God exactly wants them to do. And that's a, a terrible view for us to have as Christians because God didn't design us to be lone rangers that he gives us money that we go out and just do this, this random thing and come back with this random you know, investment that he's made with us and say, hey, look, master, here's this, this thing that I've made for you. God's made us in such a way that unless the, the verse that I had to go with this is unless the Lord builds the house, they that build it labor in vain. So unless God's taking the, like unless you're taking this investment that God's given you, giving, taking the talents that you have and using them for his kingdom and asking him for direction how to do it, you're building in vain. Like you can have all the talents in the world and have all the gifts in the world. But if you don't have an intimate relationship with him and asking him how to use those talents he's given you, then you're building something in your own strength and it's not going to stand, it's not going to last, and it's not going to have value for his kingdom. So each one of us has been given talents and these talents are to be used in our ministry for God. Do you guys realize that each one of you guys are ministers of the kingdom of God? Sometimes that's a scary thought for people. They're like, oh, I'm, not, I'm not a minister. I'm, I'm not somebody who's, who's called a minister, but we are. Each one of us has been given talents that we're supposed to use to bless other people's lives and to show other people of his kingdom and his goodness and to bring other people into his kingdom. So we do that by sharing the gospel verbally and, and proclaiming his goodness. We also do that by our own lives, our generosity, our kindness, how we treat people, and how we exemplify what White one? Oh, yep. Nailed it. All right. Um, so the question I have for you guys is, is how is God calling each one of you, and what, what is each one of you guys' ministries? Because all of us should be aware of what our calling is and how God's blessed us individually to minister to the people around us. And if you don't have that, that is okay. Well... time I'm not that talented okay so I want to I want to share with you guys something that that happened in my life about seven years ago I had a strong desire to become a pastor and I really felt like this was from God and so I prayed about it and I prayed for for um, there are several actually the the Baptist Church uh, when Mark Randolph left, I prayed about that. Like, God, do you want me to become the pastor of that church? When uh, our pastor, when we, when we went to church in Sharon Springs, when he went to Arizona, I prayed about that. And it was interesting to me because, like, as I had this strong desire to become a pastor, my three f closest friends in that time period all became pastors. And so I began to question myself. I'm like, Am, this is something I want. There's been opportunities, and you shut the door each time Am I not being faithful? And that's a question I had in the back of my mind. Like, what am I doing wrong if this is the desire of my heart that I'm not seeing these things happen? And I think that it's important to each one of us that we have a strong relationship with God and we're able to know that just because a door closes and God shuts something, 
doesn't mean that we're lacking faith in that moment in our life. It means that he's teaching something, uh, teaching us something. He's refining us somehow. And he's, he's taking what we're going through to use it for his glory. And now I've come to a point where, and, and then I, I was restless. I wasn't content with not being a pastor because I was like, I'm failing him somehow. I'm, not, I'm doing something wrong. Otherwise, he would have called me to a position to be a pastor. Now, I'm completely content in my life. I am 100% happy with where I am. I know what my ministry is. I know what my calling is. And I know what I'm supposed to be doing right now in my life. And if God opens the door for me to be a pastor, great. If he doesn't, that's great too. Because where I am at right now is exactly where God wants me to be. And that's where each one of us need to be is completely content with where God has us right now and how he's refining us right now and how he's using us our, our talents right now. Because back then, even though I wanted to be a pastor, I wasn't content with not being a pastor because I felt like the fact that I hadn't become one was evidence that I wasn't being faithful. And that wasn't true because I didn't understand what the scriptures were saying about who I am in Christ and what each one of us are to, to do. So first of all, you need to have a vision for what God's calling you to be. And the vision is really important. If you, don't know what your, if you don't know what your calling is and that ministry is yet, that is fine. You need to take time and seek his face and ask him, God, what direction that you have me to go in. And while you're waiting for that answer, be faithful every single day. Because if you think about Daniel, Daniel eventually became this, this prophet that did, did these great things for God. But what did he do before all that stuff happened? He was faithful to be obedient to what God called him to do, which was not to eat the king's choice food. So before he knew anything about what he would become, he was faithful in the little thing of, I'm going to be obedient to what God's calling me right now. David was called to be a king, but before he became a king for 18 years, he ran away from the king that he was serving. And he had opportunity two times to kill that man. And his, his nephew, who he loved and was one of his closest confidants, they go down and they, they sneak into Saul's tent to prove to Saul that they, they had the ability to kill him. And while they're there, his, his nephew's like, hey, just kill him. God's delivered him to your t hands the second time. He's like, and you don't even have to kill him. I'll kill him. Just say the word and I will strike him. And I don't even have to strike him twice. He'll be a dead man because God has delivered him into your hands. Surely this is the hand of the Lord. But what did David say? I'm not gonna raise my hand against the Lord's anointed. So David was faithful Daniel was faithful, and every single man of God that we can point to in the Bible, whether they knew their calling or they didn't know their calling, they were faithful to do the things that they knew, knew to do before that calling came. Okay, but that, that calling and that understanding of knowing that is something that we need to pursue because if you think about the men in the Bible, like um, we talked about this morning, um, and I said I was going to bring it up, and I should have marked the, the, the thing better, but John the Baptist, there's prophecy about John the Baptist and Isaiah. So it's about a voice calling in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord. So John the Baptist understood what his calling was, is that he was a voice crying in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. If we look at Jeremiah, when God called Jeremiah at a young age, he says, see today, I have appointed you over the nations to build up, to pluck down, to tear, to, over, to do a bunch of, of these different things. Jeremiah had a vision from a young age of who he was in Christ. Moses had this vision, and that's why it says in, in, in uh, and we read it in one of my uh, previous sermons back in November, Moses had this calling and this understanding of who he was. But then he ran away from it in the, when it didn't happen the way he thought it should happen. And he, he found out later on when he was 80 in the wilderness. All of us, it's important that we understand what our talents are and what our gifts are so that we can use those things appropriately. But as we're growing and understanding those things, it's okay that we just are faithful with where we are but as we're learning and figuring those things out. But it's important to you. It's um, Jeremiah 29, 11. Um, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You will call upon me, pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and you will find me as you seek me with all your heart. As we seek God with all of our heart, he's going to show us and direct us in the way that we can minister to the people around him and best use those talents that God has given us. So how do we be faithful while we're waiting to understand how God's blessed us and given us talents? Well, we need to be faithful in the things that we know that we need to do. We need to be faithful in the word. So being faithful in the word also takes vision. 
if you think about the different places in the Bible that talk about uh, Scripture, um, like um, Joshua 1.8, this book of the law shall not depart from you, but you shall meditate on it day and night. Well, that's a good picture from Scripture that we need to meditate on the law day and night. It also says that in Psalms 1.1. Blessed is a man that does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is on the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. So we have a picture of, of two men, one Joshua that God's telling him, meditate on the word day and night. David that's saying, hey, you need to meditate on the, the word day and night. So we have a picture from the word. Hey, let's meditate on it day and night. Uh, Jeremiah, your words were found night and they became for me the joy and the delight of my heart. So we have a picture that you can take the word and it can become the joy and the delight of your heart. And we also have that from Psalms 119. Um, my soul is crushed with longings after your ordinances at all times. So we have two scriptures that talk about how often we should be doing it. We have two scriptures that talk about what our desire should be and when we pursue the, pursue the word of God. Uh, Caleb, do you mind sharing with us Psalms 119? No? True it? Does it say, I have hidden your word in my heart so that I might not sin against you? All right, perfect. You did a good job. So we have a picture that we can overcome sin by hiding it in our heart. Um, your word I've hidden my heart so that I might not sin against you. How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. Um, in Colossians it says, let the words of Jesus Christ richly dwell within you. Um, there's many more scriptures on the word, but take one of those or any one of those and say, okay, I need to be a man who's in the word day and night. And I va base that vision off of Joshua 1.8 or Psalms 1 through, or 1 through 1, and I, I say to myself, I need to be in the Word every single day. So for me, what does that look like at this season of my life? I listen to the Bible all the time. I don't hardly ever read the Word right now. Like it's been five months since I read the Word, but I listen to it every single day because the thing that I focus on is let the words of Jesus Christ richly dwell within you. So I focus on let the words of Jesus Christ richly dwell within me. I want to memorize as much of Jesus' words within me so they're constantly in my mind. That's not for, e for everybody. Some people might love soaping, and doing soaping is scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So whether or not you like to take down and just focus on one scripture and meditate on it for 30 minutes and you really dig into that one scripture, or you like me, you like to, to listen to a bunch of it and memorize it so you can think about it later, it doesn't matter. How you do it doesn't matter. But putting it in your life, meditating on it day and night does. And that's what I love about our faith is that God doesn't say, here's the cookie cutter thing that all of you have to do. You have to do the word this way. It doesn't say that, but it does say it's got to be in your life day and night. It does say that we should long for it. It does say that we can overcome sin with it. It does say that it becomes the joy and the delight of our heart, but it doesn't give us a blueprint on this is how much you have to do it. So each one of us need to have the scripture in our mind and in our heart, know what it says and then create our own vision for, okay, this is what, it, like this is this, uh, let the words of Jesus Christ richly dwell within my heart. Well, for Jay Young, this means I'm going to listen to this much of the Bible, you know, this many hours a day, or while I'm working, or whatever, and this is how I'm going to do it. For Jessica, it means, hey, I'm going to sit down, and I'm going to meditate on this deal, and I'm going to soap on this verse. Whatever it is, for you, just make sure that you are faithful. And as you are faithful in the word, and have vision for what God's calling you to do, you're going to, to do great things. Now, the other thing I want to bring up, why is that vision so important? Because our life is hectic. And the enemy wants to come in and steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to say, hey, Jay, really focus this much on, on your business. And focus on this thing over here. And focus on this. And I'll, I can get distracted so easily by so many things. And if I don't have at the core of who I am, hey, Jay Young is a man who, who lets the words of Jesus Christ richly dwell within him. And I, if I don't have a deep vision for that, that thing, then I'm going to be distracted by how much I love taking care of cattle. Because taking care of cattle is awesome, and what I'm planning for my business is awesome. But at the end of the day, what I do with my business has no spiritual blessing for anybody else other than how much of the word I put in my life and I use my business as a means to bless other people. So if I don't have a core foundation for who I am in Christ and why I read the word every single day, then it's not going to happen because cows are so awesome. I'll get so distracted that that's all I'll think about. And every single one of us, whether it's leather working, 
right? Or, or I don't, whoever else has really awesome things that they do in their life that can distract them. You're going to be distracted. And so it's important to have that deep vision for what, what keeps you grounded. Um, in prayer, it's the exact same thing. We need to understand that the scripture says, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. So for me, my devotion looks like, it says in, in the Bible that having risen a long time before daylight, Jesus went to a solitary place and prayed. It also says um, in Isaiah, this, the verse I've quoted a lot to you guys about, um, he awakens me morning by morning. He awakens my ear to listen to the disciple. If, to me, if Jesus did that and had his deep, intimate relationship with the Father, I'm not better than Jesus. So if Jesus needed that, I feel like I need it too. So I want to wake up in the morning and I want to have an intimate time with Jesus. And I want to ask God to speak to me like Jesus asked the Father to speak to him. And I want to try to discern as best as I can when God speaks to me. And if I'm going to discern whether it's not my mind and whether it's God's mind, I need to know the scriptures. That's how I feel convicted as I read the word. Each one of you, as you read the scripture and see what it says about prayer, we have to come up with our own convictions and know without a shadow of a doubt that this is why we do it. Because when you wake up in the morning and it's early and you're tired and you want to go to bed, if you don't have a strong vision for why you're getting up and how important it is to you, you're going to go back to sleep. The flesh is going to kick in. Okay, so each one of us has to have that strong vision for why we're in the word, why we pray. The last thing I want to talk about with being faithful is we're faithful in the word, we're faithful in prayer, but we also, no, there's two, sorry. There's two things. You need to be faithful in serving the way David was faithful in serving. And we have to have a, a, a strong vision for that as well. Why do you guys serve, want to impact Greeley County with the love of Jesus Christ? What verses in scripture drive you to serve? And the other thing I want you guys to consider is, is God wants us to love and to serve the people that we're excited to, to love and to serve as much as the people that are the hardest to love. Because if I, if it's so, I mean, it's easy to love Jessica because Jessica's so awesome and I love my wife and it's easy to serve my wife. But somebody who treats me really badly, like I try to look for justifications in the Bible on how to stay away from them, not how to love them, right? Everybody's like, well, I can't be abused by people. I can't let them treat me that way. I need to distance myself and do all these other things. But what does the word of God say? Love your enemies. Do good to those who persecute you. Pray for your enemies. You know what the cool thing about praying for your enemies is? If I pray for something every single day, I want to see that thing answered. I'm invested. I don't like wasting my time. I like my time having meaning and value to it. So if I pray for someone... I end up going from, man, they're really annoying to me. Like, man, I really want to see their life transformed. Man, I really want to see God become the very essence of who they are. I don't care that they treat me that way. I want my prayers for them to be answered. That's the, the essence of, of doing that. So are you guys treating the people who treat you the worst the best? Are you praying for them? Are you fighting for them just the way you, you would pray for, for someone just as close to you? And the other thing I want to ask you guys with that is, is, do you love the people inside these walls? And do you want them to see all the blessing, and all, all, all of them, that, that God has for them, as much as you want somebody outside of these walls to be saved? You know, like we can get hurt by other Christians. We can be hurt by other Christians. Do you forg are you quick to forgive other people? Because if you're not quick to forgive the people inside the four walls, how are you going to forgive somebody that, that's outside the walls? Something I asked Caleb and Truett, they were fighting this morning. Like, do you think that Jesus wants you guys to know, or uh, the people outside, the, uh, or the, that Jesus wants you to share the love with, with, of God with other people? And he said, yeah. I'm like, well, how are they going to see it if you don't love each other? So it's the same way with us. And I'm going to ask you guys a harder question too. People who are in leadership over you, if they ask you to do something hard or difficult, are you quick to serve them? Are you quick to have a reason for why you shouldn't ha have to serve them? Does, does Justin and April come to you first or they come to you last when they need something done? Are you someone who's, who's ready to say, hey, yeah, I can do that for you? Are you like, oh, I don't really want to do that? 
Because think about it. If God's, God's given us authority and God called David to be submissive to a guy that was going to kill him, how much more should we want to serve and be submissive to the leadership that God's placed in our life here at the church? Right? Even if they're, even if they're, even if they're in the wrong. I remember, like, here's, here's a question I have for you too. Um, how would you feel if Justin said, I think you need to stop being a baby about this? He said it to me. And you know what? When he said that to me, I was really happy because I was like, you know what? He's right. I'm being a baby about this. I'm really glad he trusted me to say that. Now, if he said that to you, would you be greatly offended? If he, if he said, you're being a baby about this, would that offend you? Because if, it, if, it, if you're offended easily by, by your spouse, by somebody who's in leadership over you, by other, like whatever it is, if you're offended, are you really walking in the spirit? Because the spirit has asked us to forgive people to be full of grace, to give grace when other people don't deserve grace. I think that's the easiest barometer for me if I'm walking by the Spirit is when someone says something stupid to me and I get mad at them for what they said that was stupid or how, like the, how they responded or how, or how they treated me. If I'm easily offended, it's really showing me that I'm walking in the flesh and not walking in the Spirit because the Spirit tells me to give grace in every situation and giving grace in every situation doesn't come natural. So... If I'm walking by the Spirit, I'm able to give grace easily. If I'm not walking by the Spirit, I don't. The last thing I want to talk to you guys about, about being faithful. When we look at the differences in these two parables, the one that sticks out to me the most is, is that he gave in one five, two, and one, and the other he gave each one ten. And I think it's so important that we understand that, that the Holy Spirit is all over both these differences. Because in some senses, each, like, I don't have the same amount of talents. Like, God's given me less than one when it comes to having a voice to worship, and he's given grace more than five, right? So God's given grace, a, a, abounding in grace amount of talents when it comes to worship, and my voice just low down here with talents, right? And then shade on the ability to be musically inclined, he's given a lot of talents, and he's given me not a very good ability to even keep clap on tune, Okay? So when we think about the, the, the amount of gifts and stuff that we have in different areas, each one of us has been given more in some areas. Each uh, one of us is given less in some areas. How many of you guys like feel like I don't, would, would never want to stand up and give a sermon? Well, I don't, I don't have that fear of having to speak in front of people. I, I, I don't have that. Okay, so I've been given that in the area of being able to not be afraid of what people think when I'm you know, stumbling through a sermon. I don't really care that I sound stupid right? So some of us have been given different areas and different talents, and that's under important for us to understand is that we're going to be held accountable differently on the day of judgment based on the talents that we've been given. And it's, it's something that for some people, it's like, oh no. But for me, I'm like, great. You've given me these talents, and I want to be faithful with them, and you know what? I screw up all the time, and you're full of grace all the time. And so as long as I am faithful in the word and in prayer and doing what your word says, no matter how many times I fail, you're going to be faithful to forgive me and keep picking me back up. The other thing that is really cool is when we look at Luke, he gives every single one of them 10. Why is it important that he gives every single one of us 10 in Luke? And in the other one, he gives different amounts to talents. Because each one of us need to understand that in the same way that it were different, the measure of what he's given us and his love is the same for every single one of us. God doesn't give me less love because I, I sound like a dog getting strangled when I worship and give Grace more love because she can sing so much better than me. Or he doesn't give me more love because I, I can give a sermon without like sh shaking and falling down and falling apart and not give it to the person who's afraid to stand in front of a group. God gives every single one of us the same amount of measure of love. And each and every single one of us need to understand that we have been given a, a, a gift and we have been given talents that we are supposed to use for his kingdom. And sometimes we think because I don't have Grace's gift, I don't have Shade's gift, I don't have Jay's gift, I don't have these gifts that, 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 that people I see around me, I am less than them. And I'm not going to be held accountable 
the way that those guys are held accountable because I'm less. And that's what the problem with this servant is. is he, he's like, I gotta, I'm going to take what I, I have and I'm going to hide it because I don't want to get in trouble for failing. That's what that, that's what that whole thing is. He's like, I, I, I knew that you were an exacting man and you reap what you don't st- sow. And what if I take what you've given me and, and, I, and, I, and I squander it and I screw it up? The guy that, got, had, that had 10 and only got five, he didn't think less of himself because he didn't get 10 like the other guy did. He just went out and did what he could do to get the five. And it's the same thing with us. I don't, I don't, I don't compare myself to Andrew. I don't compare my, my, myself to Paul. I don't compare myself to the other people in, in the room. I look at God and I say, God, what gifts have you given me that I can minister to your kingdom? Because what Andrew does and his gifting does don't matter. It does not matter that I sound terrible. God has a different plan for me than being a worship leader, and it's okay. And God has a different plan for each and every single one of us, but we need to not see, see the talents that God's given us and say, well, you know, I've, I've only been given two, and, and, and Andrew's been given five. So because, or I've only been given one, and Andrew's been given five. Since I only have one, I'm not going to do anything with the one. I'm just going to dig it all and then throw it in a hole because my one is nothing compared to Andrew's five. And that's exactly what this wicked and evil servant did. He squandered what he had been given. Because really, when we see it, we see it as five, we see it as two, and we see it as one. But God sees it all as, I've given all of you tens. I've given every single one of you the same measure of love and the same passion and every single one of you the same measure of faith that you can call upon me, come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. That's not to the guy that's been given five, different than the one he gives to all, the same amount of ability to come before him and to find him. Those who seek me, find me. So as the worship team comes up to play this last song, I want the prayer team to come up too. And I want you guys to think about this for 2021. What ways are you guys not being faithful right now that, hey, I need to be more faithful in the word. I need to be more faithful in prayer. I need to be more faithful to serve in my church. Or I need to be more faithful to believe that what God's word says about me is true. It's not true about Jessica and then not true about me. It's true about Jessica and it's true about me and it's true about everyone. That God loves me and has given me the same kind of talents, just different, to be able to bless his kingdom that he's given every single one of us. Whatever you need prayer for this morning, if you want to come up, we can pray for you. If you want prayer from your pews, that's fine too. But I want you guys to encourage you guys to be faithful in everything that God's given you, not just with your vision and your calling, but in, in the word, in prayer, and in how you serve and believe, how, and, and how you see that God sees you. Because how you believe God sees you is immensely important. You need to understand that you're his child, that you are the bride of Christ, that you are just as much the bride of Christ as anyone else. And if that's something you struggle with, you need prayer and let us pray for you because you need to understand that. Because think about it. How can you serve even if you're less than? If I think I'm less than than Justin, how can I serve the the body? If I think I'm less than Shade, how can I serve the body? I'm not less than. We all have the same amount measure of talents and gifts. And it's for up to us to understand that, know it, and walk out in those talents and to bless as many people around us as possible. Because we don't have long on this earth. Dear me, Father, Lord, bless us this morning as we go out. Lord, give us an understanding of who you are. Give us a desire to serve you. And Lord, bless us richly indeed. May 2021 be a year that we're faithful. That we're faithful to to, to pray. That we're faithful to be in the word. That we're faithful to, to believe what your word says is true about us. And that we're faithful to serve the people around us, Father. In Jesus' wonderful name.